when it when it comes to like individuality, right? Yeah. What is a good way for people to start to get to know themselves? Does it make sense to you what I'm asking? Yeah, it does. Well, I keep coming back to something that I tell a lot of people I think is very important is the desire to know yourself. If you cannot obtain from the world that which you really desire, you must teach yourself not to want it. If you cannot get what you want, you must teach yourself to want what you can get. Mm -hmm. So people are very good at faking it. And you could be out there and listening and go, yeah, I, I kind of want to know myself better. Okay, let me get online and, and get, you know, and they just forget about it because the other forces are stronger than that. You have to have a level, you know that if you're in recovery, a level of disgust, you have to hit bottom. Yeah. You have to go, I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to find out who I am. I want to touch that in core of individuality that I know is still within me, that soul that I believe is still there. And this is like this is like confession and atonement. It's the proper way to think about it, is you can think about what it is that you did wrong or insufficiently that led to the collapse of your plan. Right? So that's the first investigation. Right? And, and I'm not trying to be flippant about this because sometimes people's dreams are quite realistic and they still fail catastrophically. You know, it can be brutal. You know, maybe you did make a lot of good decisions and you suddenly got ill or someone in your family did and everything went to hell on you. It doesn't have to be because you've done something cardinally foolish that you fail. You know, it, it's built into the structure of the world. It doesn't matter. You can also retreat into yourself and you can say something like, all right, I need to retool my conception of strategy, but also potentially my conception of goal. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Maybe I have to look somewhere else. You, you go back into your childhood and you go, what was it that made me so different, what, that was so weird about me? What was it that I was attracted to? As you go through that process, things will start coming up. It's like you're digging, you're excavating, and you're an archaeologist into your own past. Yeah, it's like using a brush and brushing off, you see a little bit of bone, and then you're like, yeah. what other questions can I ask around here that might help me remove a little more dirt? Yeah, and memories will come up, like your memory when you're two years old and your brother popping up his head. Things will start coming back to you, and you'll start connecting to who you were when you were young, and you're connecting to who you were as an adolescent. What did I do that wasn't as good as it could have been? And where did I fail to look so that the probability of my failure was higher? Now, now to ask that question, you have to want the answer. That's, that's what it means to knock or to ask or to seek. This, this is no joke. It's like you have to want to know. And it's a very painful thing to do because especially if you had given it your all to the degree you were able, and you have reason to be bitter, you're going to be searching for the errors that you still made. And discovering your own errors is always extremely painful, right? You have to have the desire. If there's no desire there, if you're just mimicking, if you're just saying it just for the sake of it because it sounds good, I can't help you. But if it's still there, yeah, you want to start by, I mean, there are many, there are many paths you can take. A very good path is to, is to take a journal and start journaling. Right? and writing down your thoughts and writing down your dreams. And when I say that, I say, don't do it on a computer. I mean, I know a lot of young people don't know how to handwrite anymore, but pick up a pen. I still handwrite. Yeah. Pick up a pen and a journal and write it down. And so you have to be willing to strip yourself down. That's what humility means fundamentally. And then, but the advantage is, this is why it's so useful to listen to people. You might find out where you're stupid, and then you could stop being stupid. And so one of the reasons you confess your sins, let's say, is because you want to discover where you're insufficient. Now, it's painful. You know, it's painful to encounter an, an impediment in the form of someone else's opinion that might show you where you're blind and ignorant, or willfully blind even. But the advantage to that is you can rectify the error, and then as you move forward, you're stronger. So there's a gospel statement that's very relevant to this. So Christ tells his followers that if they knock, the door will open. If they ask, they'll receive. And if they seek, they'll find. 